everybody, and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live. We're coming to you a little bit later tonight because of our technical difficulties we had with the internet, but hey, we're still here. We're excited to have you, and we're coming from the offices of First Baptist West, and as always, Elizabeth's Immaculate Desk. She keeps her desk looking a whole lot better than mine. Man, we have a great program for you tonight, and we're looking forward to uh, what we have going on. But before I go any further, let, uh, let's go ahead and bring in my sidekick who actually decided to join us tonight. She, I know she's been a little bit of a diva, but uh, she's here. So here's my sidekick, Kaylee. Kaylee co-host. Co uh, yeah, co-host. All right, so how are you doing? I'm doing well. So I'm glad you could actually get back with us tonight. I know. Well, you said we were going to talk about me, so I figured I could come. <laughs> yeah, since it is about you, well, I appreciate you coming and I'm glad you have everything going all right this week. Yeah, I mean, it's busy, but it's going well. It's normal, everyday stuff, huh? Sometimes. I mean, uh, we're selling our house and all of that stuff, so yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's exciting. Well, well, good. Well, I, I kind of joked with the people last week about, you know, you being a little bit of a, a, a diva. diva. And, and, and a bridezilla. Bridezilla. <laughs> so something exciting has happened to you since the yeah. last time you were on the program. Won't you tell everybody what took place? Well, Keith proposed and I said yes. All right. Well, congratulations. All right. We're excited about that. I broke him in. Got it, yeah, it took a while, but you, and you were getting a little psycho about it, but it finally I happened, huh? I wasn't psycho. Oh, of course you weren't. Okay, you never mind. You, you, you were, you I was well. just, every time he was, he said something, I'm like, well, if you just proposed. <laughs> so my subtle, reply for everything. Yeah, subtle, yes, uh, all it right. was not subtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I think we have uh, the actual proposal that yes. you allowed us to watch. So yes. folks, we hope that you'll enjoy uh, watching Kate get proposed to. So John, why don't we go ahead and hit that up and let people see it. Any scissors? Oh, you clicked them on here. Do I have to? Uh, I guess I gotta tie it. Okay. Oh, I can't do it with my hand. I have scissors right here. Oh. I'm not a genius, right? I thought I had scissors. I wasn't listening. Oh, how that was sweet! Awesome. Yeah, Were you I excited about it. Yes, I had no idea. You did. You didn't know. No. When did When did you actually know that there was something happening? Well, I was having a conversation with my parents in the living room, and Keith was standing in the kitchen, and he kept saying, "My dog, which is a golden retriever, he was saying Bailey loves me more." And so I just kept turning around, like, "No, he doesn't," and went back to my conversation with my parents. So it wasn't until I was like, Bailey, come here, which is where the video starts. And he had the ring or the box on a string. So that I was like, I kind of, I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. <laughs> but, oh uh, yeah. So it was at that point. But before then, I had no idea. We had right. just gotten back from Jade's bachelorette party. So uh -huh. I was kind of tired. I was like, I'm glad I took a shower because I was stinky. So, but I was very surprised. Well, it was exciting, and congratulations. I'm proud of you. Do you, you. you have a date set yet? March 20th. March 20th. It seems like a long ways away, but yes. oh, it's coming back. Yeah, It'll if he had back. his way, he would go to the courthouse tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but Well, just like what I always tell every couple that comes into my premarital counseling sessions, they don't get to say too much. It's, mm. it's, the, it's, the, <laughs> it's the bride's ceremony. The groom is just a very important invited guest, so that, that's pretty much how it goes. So, he didn't but, know premarital counseling was a thing, because I was oh, like, well, we have to schedule it with Harold. He goes, you have to do premarital counseling? I'm like, oh, buddy. Yeah, well, it'll be fun. He'll enjoy it. Some, Maybe. Some. But again, congratulations. Thanks for letting Thank us uh, 
enjoy the get to be a part of it and then we had a little fellowship after afterwards and so yes yeah because i look like a bum and they're they were all like kaylee you need to go change there's people waiting at the church for us i'm like wait what <laughs> and i'm like so i had to go in. they had to they made me go change because i looked yeah. like a bum well we're, we're excited <laughs> you. congratulations real proud Thank of you. you and she's not being a bride silly yet we don't know how that's going to go <laughs> but it, it's happening she's been well so far and so uh we just have about uh, four more shows left of, of the season so we're about to wrap this thing up and how many i think we've done like 18 this is number 18 show oh, and goodness. we're only going to do it for four week four four episodes and here we've run run into it but anyway we got a lot going on we do want to make another um, a quick thing that gina hinton has asked me to to share and after my episode sunday morning <laughs> uh we got quite a start to last week's second service uh and probably got as rattled as i believe i've ever gotten in my life and so i've been taking a ribbing from it but we got an event coming up saturday that, that uh, they wanted me to mention but what i'm going to do so I don't get all messed up again. <laughs> Kaylee is about to mention to you what we have Saturday that Gina Hinton has asked us to share tonight. So Kaylee, why don't you tell them what's going on? Uh, on Saturday, it will be Jade and Nathan's wedding shower. The wedding shower. Um, <laughs> it starts at 1030 in the fellowship hall. Um, and they are registered for uh, Bed Bath & Beyond and Target. Um, but she is also asking um, for like your favorite recipe to make or maybe a family recipe um, for her and Nathan to be able to try out uh, when they get married. What she actually means well, by Well, Nathan that. to yeah, make so it. Nathan <laughs> and her to enjoy, it. yes. To enjoy <laughs> yes, uh, I've known her since she's in the third grade we've been around, had her so yeah, it, she doesn't need it for her, I promise you. Well, it's for it, her to enjoy, yeah, but Nathan to make, yeah, yes. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for doing that much yes. better than I did a week <laughs> this past Sunday morning. Uh, if, you, if you're wondering what we're all talking about, just go to our YouTube channel, go to last week's service, and it, within the first five minutes, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, yes. I've been taking quite a bit of beating over that. So anyway, we're, we're going to have a great program tonight. We have uh, Patrick's here. How do you feel about Patrick and Sadie being here? I'm so excited. I've been waiting for them to be here for forever. And I'm pretty sure Sadie's probably like, stop texting me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm again? like, you get to be here next week. <laughs> but yeah, I'm well, so excited for them to be here. In fact, Patrick's going to be on the program here in just a few minutes. Yes. So we're real excited about that. So anyway, what's well, great, been a good week, a couple of weeks for you. We're glad to have you back, being my sidekick, looking forward to it. <laughs> co host Yeah, there you go. All right, well, tell, tell us what's happening next. Um, the next is the three things that you need to know. <laughs> well, all right. Thank you, Katie. So the three things that you need to know from here at First Baptist West. Number one. Our Sunday School small groups, man, we are excited because they are starting up on August the 16th. We're really excited about getting people in some of our classes back into our church. As a matter of fact, it's, it's going to be uh, for everybody from preschool all the way up to senior adults. We're going to have classes. Uh, now, I want to bring attention to something is that our schedule has changed a little bit than what it was back in March. Uh, so I want to show that to you real quick. What we're going to be doing is our first service that we normally had at 8 o'clock. We've been having it at 8.30 all this time. It will now still be uh, at 8.30. So our first service will be at 8.30. Our small groups will not start at 9.30. They'll be starting at 9.45. So we want to make sure you, you know that. And maybe I should have not told you that. So if you show up for 9.30, you'll be early for Sunday school. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway, 9.45 for our small groups. Uh, now, what we're going to be doing is some of you may be a little concerned about attending small groups uh, with everything that's going on. We are going to be having some Zoom classes. Uh, we're going to be uh, having video stuff because we want to make sure that everybody that wants to be in Sunday school is going to have an opportunity to do that. So we will continue to do some Zoom things, uh, some uh, video stuff for, for the uh, other groups, but those will be posted and that will be, all of them will start at 945. So if you want to attend a Zoom class, uh, go to our webpage and all of our groups will be there. So you'll just pick one and uh, Right now, they're at different times, but starting on the 16th, uh, they're all going to be at 945. And then, of course, our second service, 
will start at 11 o'clock. Instead of the 1045, they'll start at 11. And uh, we want to encourage you to come. We will be social distancing in our classes. Uh, everyone will be spread out as much as we can get them, but we're looking forward to doing that. That's number one. Number two, uh, the, the M28 Ministries are coming up. We're going. It's our turn on Saturday the 15th. We're going to be feeding them uh, at the Bridge House, uh, the same place where we've been doing it when we did the Tuesdays throughout the summer. But we're going to be needing help uh, setting up. What they're going to be doing is they're still going to be giving away the clothes like they've done before, uh, before the COVID uh, thing struck us. And so they're going to be uh, setting up clothes. Uh, we'll be feeding people, then we'll need some people to help mm -hmm. us tear down. And there will be a little worship time. Uh, in the middle of that. So uh, on the 15th is First Baptist West time at the Bridge Ministry. So I want to encourage all of you uh, to help us out a little bit. We're going to be needing uh, as many people as we can. So if you'd be interested in doing that, contact us here at First Baptist West at the office and we'll give you all the details or look on online and we'll be sharing that with you. So that's number two. Number three, our back to school prayer rally. We're going to be doing that on Sunday, August 23rd at six o'clock here at the church. And we're really excited about that. So what we want to do is we want to encourage all of our families to join us at six o'clock on Sunday night. And we're going to be having a back to school prayer rally. And uh, Patrick will be talking about that here a little bit more in just a few minutes. Uh, that's going to be something that he's uh, putting together for us. Now, we also want our teachers and our administrators here as well, because I know we have a lot of uh, teachers and administrators here as part of our First Baptist West family. And so we're going to be having all of you together. Now, what else we're going to be doing is we're needing all of our teachers. We're going to have these prayer cards like we do every year that we want to be praying for our teachers every single day from the starting of the school year till the end. So we want you to come and to fill out these cards. And that night, we'll be giving everybody a card with the teacher's name on it, uh, whether you're, again, the public school, private school, or a homeschool, you're still involved in that. And so after that service, we're, that's when we'll allow our teachers uh, and administrators to go shopping here in, in our fellowship hall for all the school supplies that you're going to be needing. So if you want to help us out, any of our members, uh, bring <laughs> school supplies here at the church. We're collecting those over the next few weeks. We'll need pencils and paper and glue and uh, just copy paper, everything that you can. Uh, to help us out. So uh, please, if you're a teacher and you're not going to be able to be in our services over the next few weeks because, again, uh, you're concerned about being here, if you'll call the office, we want to make sure that we get your name on a card uh, so that we want to be praying for you and then be here that night so that you can be able to shop. So that, again, is on August uh, 23rd at 6 o'clock here at the church, and we're looking forward to uh, supporting our schools, praying for our schools, supporting our teachers and administrators. Again, being a former teacher in the public school system, I do know uh, the, the struggles with the teacher and how much uh, they have to put into their own money to get supplies. So that's why we do that, and we're looking forward to it. So those are the three things that you should know about First Baptist West, and we're really excited about what's going on. But thank you for, for all of that. So now let's go ahead and, and bring in uh, Patrick. We want to welcome Patrick Duncan, our new associate pastor here at First Baptist West. Now, how are you doing? Pretty good now that we're here and have that eight-hour drive everywhere. <laughs> yes, praise the Lord. Yeah, we, 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 as, as many of you know, we took a trip and we had several of us go down and uh, pick, help you get you guys loaded and, and brought you back. And so it's good to have you here. Welcome to First Baptist West. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. And so yesterday was your, your first official day. Right. And we initiated you quite well. Yeah, it was here. exciting. You know, yeah. I, I, it, you know, almost got arrested my first day here. I thought, <laughs> wow, this is going to be great. My first day. And I'm going to, people are going to see my picture in the papers. Uh, <laughs> local Baptist minister arrested. <laughs> so I came and got my keys on Monday. And I thought, yay, I can get here early Tuesday morning and get started. And uh, did you know there's an alarm system in yeah. this church? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know Do you know need that. to know the passcode? <laughs> well, we might not just say it on here. Well, no, 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 no. But I know that now. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, I, I, there were, there were bells and whistles. <laughs> yes. We, we, uh, we, we almost let him come in with the pomp and circumstance, alarms, uh, bells ringing, and police escorts on their way. <clears throat> so I uh, had a great time. And, and not only did you uh, get welcomed by breaking into the church, uh, setting off alarms, 
then, of course, we had waiting for you uh, a brand new desk. That's right. They came in five separate boxes. Yeah, yeah, they, it wasn't <laughs> it took the, desk, entire, right? and the entire day to assemble. Yes. But I got it. Yeah. And we had cardboard <laughs> everywhere. It looked like I was building a clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so then we broke him in there. And then to top it off, man, the creme de la creme, he got to be in the staff meeting at 2 o'clock. Man, I'm telling you. It's great. And, it's and you know what, folks? Day. He came back today. <laughs> So uh, tell them why you know you're coming back because of that desk. Well, right? I, yeah, I said before I left that I spent all day putting that desk together. I'm going to get some time sitting behind it. So <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we, we broke you in very well, and we are glad. To, we really did intend for Patrick to put that desk together by himself, but it just been we were so busy. We had so much going on that I didn't know you were actually doing it, and then I go in there, and you've got about half of it all already up, and I know Barry helped you a little bit, so... I sincerely apologize. I didn't mean to dump all that on you. It's so, okay. But, but I slept well now, last now night. You know, now you know how I operate. Yes. <laughs> so, welcome Just to First Baptist West. Throw you. you in and say, swim, man. Just enjoy it. So everything going all right, though? Yeah, going really yeah. well. How, Just... how, how is uh, Sadie, Kaylee, and Sawyer doing? They're good. We're we're excited that they get to stay with the Petersons, that we get to stay with the yeah. Petersons. But they're great they're, hosts. Aren't they, they are great hosts. But they're... Um, Spend a lot of time, you know, outside playing around and uh, just doing things around town. So they're having a good time. Good. Well, we're, we're again, we're glad to have you here. And we saw you last week over Zoom and you were in Louisiana. So now I wanted mm -hmm. to have you come on and let people know you're actually here. And Sunday morning is going to be your, your first Sunday with us to actually be leading in worship. And we're really excited about that. How do you feel looking towards Sunday? I'm excited about it. We got a good uh, worship lineup, and I we've talked a little bit about your sermon, so you don't want to miss Sunday. It's going to be a great day, worship wise, and with the sermon. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to get to it. Yeah, well, we're we're going to have a good time, and we're really looking forward to uh, Sunday morning. You have rehearsal tonight, right? Your first right. rehearsal. That's right. Is going to be tonight as soon as the program <laughs> is over, and and uh, so then you'll be leaving here, and Kaylee will be leaving, and. Uh, yes. you, you'll take the diva with you, and I hope you have good luck with her. And, and uh, she's going to be doing well. But I know, Kaylee, you're excited about having him here, right? I, I'm very excited. Yeah. So Keith, of course, gets to step aside. I'll let you jump in. But Kaylee, she's still peeing on Gets to right? say, right. yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you better not go anywhere. I, you got to talk to Keith about that one. He wants <laughs> to go to Alabama, but I keep telling him no. <laughs> Well, well, something I did want to ask you real quick, though. Uh, I, I know coming as a pastor to a new church, a senior pastor coming, uh, I, I want to know kind of your perspective of coming to a new church as a as a music worship leader. What, 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 how do you view coming into a new church? Well, you have to learn the the people, um, and so that that's kind of the first hurdle. You got to mm -hmm. learn um, what the people need from you, and what what works, and what works in the community, and everything. Um, but like I told you before, and like I, I said when I was up here for my In View of a Call Sunday, it just feels a whole lot like home. So, right. um, you know, I feel pretty comfortable in, um, in how, how I'm going to connect with people and everything. So uh, I'm just looking forward to, to getting to know everybody and uh, finding ways to, to spread the gospel outside Amen. these walls. Amen. Well, what I wanted to do also is encourage you uh, to talk very quickly about the Back to School Rally and uh, encourage our people to be a part of that. Yeah, so the Back to School Rally, um, of course, many of you have probably been a part of that before, but it's going to be a really special night. Um, I know we're going to have a, a teacher speak, right and, right, and share some with us. Uh, we'll spend some time just praying over families and over the children, uh, and then the praise team's going to have some special worship. We're going to keep it a little shorter so it'll be kid-friendly. Uh, but then at the end, we've got a really special time that we're just going to um, sing a blessing over our families and our children. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. I know Amen. it's going to be a special night. Amen. So we do want to encourage all of our families to come be a part of that. And even if you uh, know somebody that's not a part of First Baptist West Church, but you know that they could use some prayer and some encouragement, we want to ask you to uh, invite them to come and be a part of that special night with us. We're really looking forward to it. So we're, we're excited about that. We're excited about Sunday morning and uh, how you're going to be a great addition to our church. And I just wanted to bring you on tonight a little bit. 
let you talk to our folks and uh, get to joke with you a little bit. And looking forward to working with Patrick. Already the first two days have been pretty pretty fun, pretty entertaining, and it, that's welcome to First Peppers West. All I can tell you. We're having a great Good way time. to start. So uh, we're, we're excited. We're looking forward to seeing Sadie. Uh, being on TV is not her favorite thing to do, so I didn't force her to come tonight, but uh, she can actually enjoy Sadie. It's good to see you. Looking forward to uh, a visit with you some more, and Sunday morning's going to be a good, good day. Amen? Amen. Would you mind if I pray with you real quick? That'd be great. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, and we thank you for the blessings you've given us, and thank you for the opportunity to gather here tonight. And Lord, I pray over Patrick. I thank you that in your great wisdom and ability, you brought him uh, to us and Lord that brought us to him and Lord I just thank you for allowing him to be a part of this church family I look forward to getting to know him even in a greater way I love his spirit I love his energy and his excitement and father just his love for you and and I pray for Sadie that God this would be a great adventure for her and Lord that she we could see her grow and God this church could be good for her as I know she's going to be good for us and then for Kaylee and Sawyer Lord we just uh pray that God you would grow them and let them have a great growing experience here in our church and God that we could see them being the uh, the young woman and young man Lord that we know that you desire for them to be and I thank you for this family I just anoint them with your presence and your power and God might you bless his, his ministry here at First Baptist West and we're looking forward to joining together on Sunday morning and having a great great time of worship and Father it is in the name of Jesus I pray Amen. Amen. Patrick, again, thank you for being a part of our church family and looking forward uh, to what we have going on. Thank so you. before we break, I want to mention that here in just a few moments, we'll have uh, our quick Bible study. And then we got a special uh, commercial that we want you to see about uh, that you've already seen, but the Walk for Life. And so uh, we have this coming up, and we want to promote this as well. So let's take just a few moments, and then when we come back, we'll have Brother Troy Taylor is going to come and share some things with us, and we're really excited about that. So let's go ahead and join our Bible study. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking around and uh, joining in for our Bible study tonight. I just want to take a look at a couple of things uh, very quickly. One of the things that I, I want us to look at is the idea of letting people see Jesus in us. You know, we have a pretty difficult time in our society right now, and it's very important for Christians uh, to live a life that is pleasing to God, but also sets an example for the world to see. And there was an old hymn that we used to sing uh, many years ago, and it was called, Let Others See Jesus in You. And in that second verse, and I want to read it, it says, Your life's a book before their eyes. They're reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you? And then the chorus basically said, let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. And as we're doing that, as we think about it, this is the idea that God wants us to be able to portray to the world is that people see Jesus in everything that we do, especially in these very difficult times. The question was once asked to me, if you couldn't verbally tell others that you are, you are a disciple of Christ, could they realize it without you saying it? And you know, I, I began to think about that for just a few minutes, and, and I got to thinking about the scripture where Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so when we think about that, I, I, I posed that question and I kind of dismissed it at first, just like I would probably expect others to do as well. But then I think about this and there's two parts to this idea of what we say and what we do. Are we representing Jesus Christ in all aspects? What I say and how I say it or what I do and how I do them. And so the thing is, if these two aspects of my life, what I'm saying and what I'm doing, if they're contradicting each other, then people must conclude that there's no difference between them and, and me, other than I claim to be a Christian. So what I wanna encourage everyone tonight to do is to put their faith in Christ and trust in Him, and as if our, our aspect will be different, our outlook will be different if we're able to just say, God, work in me. Let me surrender myself to you and everything that I say, let everything that I do be a representation of you because I truly do believe 
the world needs to see Jesus in the church. They need to see Jesus in the people who claim to be Christian and how I talk and how I act. Folks, listen, they have to be together in order for us to do that. And so I want to encourage you tonight to allow God to speak through you, but also be in your actions. Someone once said, talk is cheap. And so the same thing goes even as Christians. We can say a lot of things, but what we do has to match. So I want to encourage you with that tonight and realize again, God is in control of all things that are going on. Even though sometimes we may not think it, he's there, he's in control. And my friends, listen to me, people are watching. People are watching the church, especially today. So let me pray with you. And then we're going to get back to our, our Bible study. We have a quick word about our uh, walk for life. And then we'll have uh, Brother Troy is going to come and share with us tonight. And I know you're going to enjoy that. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And God, we pray that, Lord, you would just continue to work through your people. And Lord, those people who are called by your name, who claim and testify to have Christ in our lives, that, Father, we could be preaching the gospel in what we say and what we do. And that, God, that you could empower your people to be able to let people see Jesus in us. In all that I'm doing, let everything I do point them to you. And God, we thank you for what you're doing through First Baptist West. We thank you for what you're doing uh, in us and through us. And Father, we look forward to the rest of this program tonight. And God, may you bless uh, Brother Troy as he shares here in just a little bit. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a quick word from uh, Walk for Life, and then Brother Troy will be joining us. God bless you. On your mark, get set, go for life. Your local pregnancy center is making big headlines in the news for life. That's right. Volunteers and staff are gearing up for one of the most life-saving events of the year, the annual Walk for Life. Your participation gives life to your community and helps your center in providing an incredible opportunity to raise awareness and save lives. Did you know each year, 1.2 million women in America choose abortion to end their unplanned pregnancies? It is reported that more than 3,000 lives are lost to abortion each day. You can take charge and be part of the positive change in the news. With your efforts and the efforts of your local center, you can begin to spread the news of hope and life bringing an end to the hopelessness felt by those helpless and hurting. Each year, your local pregnancy center hosts this event to raise awareness and provide much needed services to those men and women. Sign up today. Ask everyone you know. By encouraging friends and family to walk for life or to be your sponsor, you will be providing much needed accurate information and compassionate assistance. Don't forget to stay connected with your local pregnancy center. Stay up to date with the latest center news and events. By spreading the news, you remind your community and the world that life matters. So thank you uh, for already uh, what you're going to be doing, participating at. Again, Walk for Life. Uh, if you want to sponsor somebody, uh, a walker, or if you want to walk yourself, then what we'd encourage you to do is call the church and we can get you all the information and we can get you the pamphlets and all that. But please remember, this is one of their great fundraisers. And because of the COVID outbreak, we've not been able to do a lot of the things that we normally do through the Pregnancy Resource Center uh, to get the money. As a matter of fact, as she shared with you last week, we're down already quite a bit on where they normally are for this time of year. So Walk for Life is a very, very important cause. So please uh, join us in supporting that through, uh, on, it's going to be again on August the 15th uh, on Saturday at Elmer Thomas Park. Uh, sixth and fair. So we want you to come and be a part of Walk for Life. So been looking forward to this week since uh, I had him on the last time. 
uh, Brother Troy Taylor is our director of missions here, and uh, we're excited and honored to have him here. He's a good friend of mine, and we've got a great have a great relationship. And as many of you know, that uh, I followed Brother Troy at Tipton First Baptist yeah. Church, and so that's kind of how we got to know each other a little bit. Yeah. So he did a great job. Had an easy easy task for me once I got there. No. You did all the hard work, and I got to come in and enjoy what you did. No. So. Anyway, it's good to have you here with us. How are you doing? I'm good, brother. Thank you. And I, as we were talking earlier, I know we joke a lot, but I, I want everybody to realize just how much I love you and your family, and I appreciate this, and you're a dear friend of mine, so well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. As a matter of fact, I shared with you just a little bit ago uh, before, when Brother Troy first got here, I told him, I said, uh, the last time you were on, uh, my, my wife and daughter said they watched the show. But after a while, they got to feeling kind of guilty because they like looked like they were intruding in, on a on a buddy conversation. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, we, should we be watching? So these guys are having such a good time. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, it's good to have you here. How's Lorraine doing? She's good. She's well. Thank you. Good. She good. said to tell you how. Well, I know we've been praying for you because I know over the last uh, since you were here last that uh, you lost your dad. Yes, sir. And uh, you had his service, and yeah. so we've been praying for you Thank over you. that. And Thank hope, you. Thank you. Your mom's doing well. Yeah, she's doing well. God's been so good to everybody, and so. But thank you for that. Well, it's it's. A, we just want you to know that, and so say hi to Lorraine or hello, Lorraine. I bet she's probably watching. Yeah. So, uh, and she also warned you to to tell not to have such a good time here tonight. Yeah, right? she said be serious. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what what I, what my problem is, I'm having a hard time because I want to keep busy, but I know I have to have you here for a reason. Uh, but we could just keep busy and have our buddy session again. Amen. Amen. But. Uh, what I wanted to do, is, as many of you know, that Brother Troy uh, uh, is our director of missions, and he's a former pastor. How many churches did you pastor? Uh, five. Five churches. You pastored five churches before he became our director of missions, and we're honored to have, have you here as our director of missions. You're doing a great job, and appreciate it very much, and you're nav helping us navigate through some very difficult times here in, in our in our churches yeah. but uh, you're doing a great job thank with that. you but what i wanted brother troy to do is he's, he has an absolutely amazing testimony and so what i want to do tonight basically is just turn it over to you and uh, let you spend some time sharing with our people uh what god has done in your life and how he brought you to to accept him into your life and and then <clears throat> what he's done since then so basically i'm going to get out of your way here real quick and uh uh, let's just turn it over to you and, and let me pray with you real quick before you step into that testimony. Time, thank you. Okay? okay. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We thank you for your blessing. Thank you for Brother Troy and what he means to me and what he means to our church and our association. And Father, I thank you that you brought him to us and what a great job he's doing. And now as he prepares uh, to share with all of us his, his testimony, God, I pray that you would just anoint him with your presence, with your power, and with your clarity. That Father, he could just uh, profess the name of Jesus in his life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Brother Amen. Troy, we'll turn it over to you. Brother Harold, I I wanna I wanna share a scripture that's near and dear to my heart before I, I begin. Uh, it's hard to find a, uh, a scripture more clear with just the heart of the gospel uh, than what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 he says uh now brothers and sisters i want to remind you of the gospel that i preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word i preached to you otherwise you have believed in vain for i received and i passed on to you as of first importance that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures amen and that um that's that's uh near and dear to my heart as it is to any believer and uh one thing god has taught me about sharing testimony you know and i want i want people watching this to understand that there's a difference between a person's story and their testimony. Amen. Right. Everybody's testimony who's placed their faith in Jesus Christ has the same glorious testimony mm -hmm. um, that they've been redeemed and born again by the blood of, of, of the Son of God and uh, the power of the cross and the resurrection. I hear people all the time saying, well, you know, I don't have a great testimony like other people. I didn't do this and didn't do that. 
No, that's that's just maybe your story. Right. But a believer's testimony is the glorious saving Amen. of their heart of their soul of the gospel. Right. So um so you've asked me tonight to, to share that and a little bit about my story. So um really mine is not a lot different than a lot of people in as much as um my mom and dad were were divorced when I was two, and my I have one brother. He had just been born, and so like a lot of families that have experienced that, you know, that was a major thing uh, for my mother. My dad moved to Florida. We stayed in, in West Virginia. I was born in West Virginia. My dad was from Kentucky, so uh, I'm just a, a good old hillbilly uh, <laughs> by by birth, and um, so I grew up. You know, and my mom was such a good mom. She had to work hard as a single mother. And I have a, I have such a passion for women that are in that situation because I saw what my mom did. And um, But when I was 10, it was the first time I had a chance to go see my dad. And I was excited, you know, as any young boy would be. So we went to Florida, saw my dad. Well, that summer, unbeknownst to us, we were just little kids, um, a, a really bad custody battle took place and my dad won full custody of my brother and I. So I lived with my dad from 10 to 15. During that time, and I used to spend a lot of time on this and I don't anymore, um, you know, th there was a lot of abuse during that time. You know, physical, emotional, verbal. Um, and, I, and I don't remember seeing my mom during those five years. So now at 15, we have the opportunity to go back to West Virginia and see my mom for Christmas and we're so excited. The difference was I didn't go back. My brother did, but I didn't. So I finished out high school in, in West Virginia and then my mom got married that year. So there I am, 18 years old. I'm a young man, totally lost, separated from Christ, angry, bitter. And so I started down a path that a lot of people do um, uh, that doesn't lead you to good places. Right. Alcohol, other things, uh, fighting. I was just, I was, I was lost. And so I bounced around and ended up in Houston, Texas with my uncle and his family. They were very successful. And my mom thought it'd be good for me, uh, to, to get a little bit of that. And, and I started college and I was actually a, a, uh, a pre pre med major. Believe that or not, right. which wow. most people don't believe. <laughs> um, and and but I started having problems out there as well, right? And mm -hmm. um, just a lot of baggage. And and uh, so on a whim one day, I answered an ad in a paper about a man in a nearby town wanting to hire a donut baker. So I called it as a joke. Little did I know, um, he said, "Well, I tell you what, I'll train you. No experience required. I'll pay you three hundred fifty dollars a week." Well, then it became not a joke, <laughs> right? Because in 1981, that's a lot of money, yeah. or at least Amen. it was for me. Little did I know God's sovereignty, though, that in all of that, that man would become my future father-in-law. And I'll never forget one morning after working all night, this beautiful young woman walked in, Lorraine, mm -hmm. and I remember my heart just almost stopping. And uh, I remember saying to him, I'm going to marry that girl. I didn't know it was his daughter. <laughs> so, so he had a few choice words for me. And right. so fast forward, we end up, praise God, getting married. And then we, we ended up taking over the donut shop and building a second one. And But I was still far from God. And um, I was always a hard worker. I was always, I think, a good person. But you know, we got to face it that when we're, we don't know Jesus Christ, right, things aren't good. And I, I acted like a lost person acts, right? Right. So fast forward again, uh, we did that for a, a few years and God blessed us financially, but still, now Lorraine was, had professed Christ as her Lord and Savior. She wasn't walking with him and I sure wasn't a good witness to her about that. Right but I knew she had something special that I didn't have. So uh, after a few years, um, I decided, I came, we came back to Oklahoma, where she's from, and her dad uh, talked to me about going in the military, so I joined the Air Force, 
and uh, I always loved dogs, so I said, I'll do anything as long as I can work with dogs. Um, and uh, so I became a police officer, went to police academy, um, then went to uh, dog school, canine school, then survival school. And, and, and so for the, my career in the Air Force, I took everything dog related I could. I went to narcotics detection school, bomb dog school, and then I became a, a kennel master, a trainer, over 15 dog teams at, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. It was during that time though, and again, this is God's plan, his sovereignty. I look back now and it gives me chills. Larray started going to a little Baptist church there in right outside of Dayton, Ohio, Airway Baptist Church. And one day I heard a knock on my door and you know, I knew it was a preacher. <laughs> we can spot him, right? right? The knock. The knock. <laughs> the knock, the stand, the question. And there I stood. Uh, you know, I smoked very heavily during that time. I had a drink in my hand, and this guy said, uh, I want to I come and, and talk to you. And he didn't know me. And I, I trashed him. I verbally trashed him because I came under instant conviction but I didn't want anything to do with him or his Jesus or anything like that. I didn't like Christians. I thought they were all hypocrites, but it was I really right. that was lacking what they had. Mm -hmm. But Harold, this is a good word for every believer, every pastor. That man after that day came back to my house two, sometimes three times a week for six months. Wow. And besides my wife and this loving pastor that I saw Jesus in, he helped love me to the Lord. We became good friends, but I still, I still hadn't professed Jesus. He, he was just a friend of mine, constantly sharing the word of God with right. me and scripture. And again, little did I know um, what God's plan was, but I ended up Laterally going over to the Secret Service and I traveled with President Bush Sr. as a bomb dog handler, Vice President Quayle. And one night, uh, in my he was in my living room and I got a bomb threat down to Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, it was a bad one. They, they really thought it was a bank robbery, but they thought the guy had left a device there. And so I get my dog, they're gonna life flight me out there. And Pastor Matt said to me as, as I walked out the front door, he said, Troy, what if tonight that bomb goes off, where are you gonna spend eternity? Wow. And I said, uh, you know, Matt, and by this time, I love this guy, mm -hmm. but I said, you know, you're probably right, and I'm probably wrong, but, but not yet, and I walked out. The whole helicopter ride to Cincinnati, that's all I thought about. I land, I go in, there's TV cameras everywhere, first responders everywhere. We actually, my dog alerted on three and a half, four pounds of C4. All the way back, all I could think about was what he said to me. The Holy Spirit was just all, all over me. I get home about 2.30 in the morning. I go upstairs, we lived in a condo and I was lifting weights just to get rid of the, you know, the anxiety. Right. Sure, and, sure. and I know this is gonna sound kind of crazy to some people, but it's, it's my story, so I'm, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> right in the middle of lifting weights in that little room upstairs, the Holy Spirit entered that room. And even though I didn't understand theologically, I knew that it was God. And I come under, for the first time in my life, instant conviction. I saw my sin against the backdrop of God's holiness and righteousness and uh, that he loved me. And all that pastor had been telling me was coming in color in my head, but it was what God was doing. You know, nothing we do right. saves us, but God's grace and mercy and Christ's sacrifice. So that night I crawled over to a little bed and like a three or four year old, I cried out to Jesus. I repented of my sins and I believed that night Christ saved me and Harold my life changed I, I joke with Larry I'm like that night my wife got a new husband my kids got a new father yeah 
because of what Jesus Christ did for me. And so I'm a young believer. I start going to church. Pastor Matt about had a heart attack when I walked in. <laughs> um, and I was just excited about being saved. But then about a year and a half later, I began to feel this other uneasiness. I went and talked to Matt. And he said, you know, maybe God's calling you to the ministry. So I worked through that. And so about two years after that, I remember walking into my commander's office. And I'm at the top of my game. I could have punched my ticket anywhere. And I said, I'm resigning because God's called me to the ministry. He thought I was crazy. Yeah. Everybody thought I was crazy. Lorray was the only one that believed that that's what was happening. Her family thought I was crazy. My family <laughs> thought, because the way the world sees things, I was cashing it in. Right. But I right. knew, I knew that's what God wanted me to do. I had had my 15 minutes of fame. And I said, Lord, if you're precious enough to save me, a wretched sinner, I'll devote the rest of my life to whatever you want me to do. And I don't care what that is. Right. And so I, about a year and a half later is when I started, started taking classes at OBU and all that. But anyway, I didn't know nothing from nothing. But about a year and a half later is when I started pastoring my first church. And we've never looked back. God's just been so good to my, my family and I. And, and I, um, I'm telling you, there's nothing and no one that is outside the power of the cross Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. No sin, no nothing. And I just want to tell people, um, you, you can't understand the, the beauty of knowing Jesus Christ as your Amen. Lord and Savior. He will right. change your life and destiny. Amen. And that's all that's happened to me. And since then, I've just tried to, you know, I haven't been perfect and stuff, but I've just tried to serve him and follow him and do what he's told me to do. And he's, and he's just opened up doors for us and, and, I just, it's a, it's an honor and a joy to serve him. And, Amen. um, uh, that's a testimony of what Jesus did for me. Amen. Just an old, wretched, dumb, hillbilly sinner. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And it's still about him. Mm -hmm. And that's just a little bit of the story. And, and I just want to thank him and Amen. Uh, pra praise him tonight for all that. Amen. One thing I, I want to, and you and you mentioned it, and it struck me, uh, Pastor Matt. Is that Matt? Yeah. Okay. Matt Kunkel. The night, yeah, the night that, of your salvation <clears throat> experience, mm -hmm. uh, and the question he asked you. Mm -hmm. The thing that I keep going back to is, how do you think that would have gone over differently had he not bathed that in time with you and you falling basically right. in love with this man? You love right. this man as a friend. Right. That question is, well, that's an in-your-face question. Yes. How do you think it would have gone differently had you just didn't know him really too much, but he asked you that still that same question? It would have went like the first day I met him because he tried that mm -hmm. in different words. Right. But he developed a relationship with me. Right. No strings attached and was simply doing what God told him to do. He told me to my face, I don't like you. After about four months in, he said, I don't like you. I don't like anything about you, but I love Jesus. Wow. I'll never forget that. And um, all we got to do is just be faithful and believe. No one, no one walks in the confidence of the gospel anymore. Right. It's not about how good we are. So... so there's power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that night, because of his faithfulness, it landed exactly the way God wanted it to land. Right. Because right. he loved me and he stuck in there with me. If he didn't ever come back to my door again, which happens a lot, I couldn't have blamed him, but who knows right. where I would have been today. Exactly. And that's what really stuck out. I, I hadn't heard that part of yeah. it, but whenever you, you mentioned that, I thought, well, what what a difference that relationship makes, and so as we as, as we pray toward that, right. as now pastors and as right. a church and and people who are watching who 
you know, think that it's, it's, it's all about that shock value, that shock value doesn't have any value no. if you don't have a relationship. Exactly. And so exactly. everything is about relationship. And one of the things that I believe is that we, we as the church sometimes don't have enough relationship with people that aren't in the church. Yeah. And Jesus sat and supped and loved sinners. Right. Right? Right. That's all he did for me. Amen. Amen. And so we just got to, we got to be Christ to people and love them regardless. Amen. Because it's, it's what God has in store for them, not what he has in store for us. Right. And that's it. That's just that's them. It's out it's there. there. It's out there. Amen. Yeah. Wow. What a story. Thank you. What an brother. amazing story. Thank you for coming and sharing that with us. And uh, I, I know people, uh, a couple of them have asked about, you want to hear about your Israel trip. Yeah. But we don't have, we could go on all night, but we don't have time for that. But what I would love to have is I want to sit down with you and set up a time and have you come share that with our church. Okay. Because I know they would love to hear about your, your Israel trip. Well, Lorraine can come with me and, and, and um, we had a great time and we'd love to do that sometime. All right, very good, very good. Well, let me pray with you, and then, then we're going to wrap things up. But thank you again for coming. Thanks, Father. Father, thank you for the, this story. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for Brother Troy and Larray, and I thank you uh, for Pastor Matt. Mm. Lord, him mm. understanding the relationship. And God, I pray that everyone that's sitting in this office and everyone watching this program would understand, Lord, it's not about the information we can give out, mm -hmm. but it's about the relationship that we build. Amen. And I thank you for Brother Troy. Continue to bless him in his efforts and his work through this association. Bless Lorray and all that she does in this association, but also for him and in the church there at East. And Father, just bless their ministries. Mm -hmm. God, we pray that this church and other churches would realize, God, it's about people. Amen. And it's about them, not us. So, Father, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, that'll wrap us up for tonight. Thank you for joining in. I know we're a little bit later, but uh, we hope that you tuned in. And uh, let others know, uh, if they're not watching, they haven't watched, let them know about the program tonight. It's a very special time. Kaylee, good to have you back. You got anything to say before we break out of here? Um, I'm not a diva. Um, I'm not a bridezilla. And Harold did ask for my permission to make fun of me last week. <laughs> he is a great man and got permission to make fun of me. <laughs> well, thank, you for, thank you for backing that up. I told him, but I wanted, I wanted to hear from he you. He did. He texted so, me and asked if he yeah. could make fun of me, and I thought it was hilarious. So, so. <laughs> we've got just a few more, few more episodes to go, but we're looking forward to it. John, thank you for all you're doing. Carrie, thanks for being here and helping us out. So, uh, folks, have a great week, and remember... We want to see you uh, Sunday morning to First Baptist West at 8.30 or 10.45 and uh, get the word out. And remember, this is First Baptist West where we love God, love people, and we want to see lives changed. Have a great evening. God bless you.